good. Sometimes just because it's really bad. Truth is, often the more gaudy and purposeless the thing was, the fonder we are of it now. That's kitsch defined. And this kind of sentimental, cool junk feels silver rocket. It's a shop owned by James Straker from the Melnicks. There's blatant band plug number one. And Katrina Roundtree found him in his shop, along with a whole lot of fabulous, vulgar, lovable things like... Guido Ma, Daryl and Ozzy, Sony M, Walt Harris and Barry Crocker album. <laughs> An Astro Boy handbag. But wait, there's more. Well, Star Wars figures, comic books and collector cards and you can poke a stick at. But so where do you get it? Here at Silver Rocket. A place that is filled with stuff you thought only existed in your childhood memories. It may be junk to some people, but it is treasure to others. Where do you get all this stuff? Well, mainly from flea markets, op shops, lifelines, that kind of thing, but people bring them in as well. Really? Did it start out as your own personal collection? Kaplunk. It did start out as my own collection, but then people start buying things, and I thought, there's some money to be made here. Yeah, who shops here? Everyone, businessmen, kids, teenagers, all walks of life. That is so corny. <laughs> What's your favourite thing here? Uh, oh, Kaplunk! Probably my milkshake maker. It's a beautiful thing. I love it. What are you looking for today, Jeremy? You must have slides. Why? Um, well, I used to collect them when I was a little kid, and now I collect them when I'm an older kid. <laughs> Do you know much about them? A um, little bit. That's a talking Viewmaster slide. This is a normal Viewmaster slide. Jeremy, you're a wealth of knowledge. <laughs> We're all friends here on Wonderworld, so you don't have to be ashamed to admit that most of the stuff you see in here today, you probably have tucked away in the bottom of your drawer. Things like village people cushions, a Cindy sideboard, Snoopy, oh, Pac-Man, and a Humphrey B. Bear cushion. Nick Penn, raise your hand. The good news is, apart from the fact that this stuff is now worth a lot of money, people are owning up to owning it. So come out of the closet. What's sitting at the bottom of your drawer? Nothing, it's on top. Really? You've come out of the closet? Yes, there wasn't enough room for anything else, including me. <laughs> what sort of stuff do you fill your room with? Um, mainly 60s super sleuth and super spy stuff. You obviously have great taste. Mm, I like them. I'm not afraid to admit that I love lava lamps. Popular in the late 60s and 70s. You used to be able to get these for about $49.95 with a set of steak knives, but now, if you're lucky, you'll only find one for about $200. They're totally impractical. They give off practically no light, but they're so kish, you've got to love them. And look what happens when you turn the lights down low. Mm -hmm. James, what is the silliest thing that you sell here? It has to be Smurfs. They're little, they're blue, they don't do anything, and there's only ever one girl. What's the cheapest thing you sell here? You kids on the block candy. If people want to come in, I'll give it to them for free. <laughs> and what is the most trivial thing? Without a doubt, my KTEL Crazy Catch. KTEL made products that define my childhood. What are you looking at? James Bond cards. They're the James Bond ladies, aren't they? They sure are. What a bunch of babes. Oh yeah, oh yeah, <laughs> direct. Aren't you a little bit straight-laced to be shopping in here? Well, no, I don't think so. You should not judge people by their appearances. Exactly. I sense that you're a wild warrior on the inside. Definitely. Definitely. It's just by a matter of sheer luck that James' mum has entered the shop. I think we should have a chat to her. What was he like as a child? Well, I think he was adorable. All mothers do. <laughs> Did he collect too many things? Yes. Did you try and stop him? Yes. What would he do when you tried to stop him? Well, he had an occasional tantrum. He cried a bit. It was very small, of course. Mm. He did that when he was about 20. And generally, he was pretty easy to get on with. What do you think of his collection? Well, I think it's amazing, and I'm very proud of it. Really? Yes. Oh, you're a nice mum. But probably the best piece of collectible junk here is James himself from his Scooby-Doo socks, his pyjama pants, which he's trying to tell me he made himself, but I don't believe him, his Melnick's T-shirts, which just happens to publicise the band that he's in. There we go, we got that in to his fake tattoos on his arm of... Hong Kong Fui. And... The Peanuts Gang. You're just a walking piece of ink work. In the end. How do you describe yourself? I'm just a person getting older and trying to stay younger. And how do you stop that? You know, yourself some junk. Oh, of course, junk. That's it. The secret of eternal youth. Not bathing in ass's milk or soaking in mineral mud, but immersing in junk. It's so obvious. The answer was all around us certainly all around me. You should see my house. Anyway, the song in that story was Happy by the Melnicks. That's three times now, James. You happy? Good. Back soon.